Hello, this is Bino. Welcome back to my channel. Today what I wanted to do was talk about plant nomenclature. So um, a little bit about families and tree species. Um, Got to start off by saying this week was kind of a different type of week. It started out by me finding out that I was exposed to a guy who was COVID positive, which meant that I had to stay home. <laughs> um, kind of a bummer. I got to, you know, I had to stay home, but then it helped me do a little bit of research for the video that we're going to work on. So in a way, it was kind of cool anyhow. All right, let's get to it. And talking about botanical names, we'll s you'll have family, genus, species, variety, and cultivars. Now those are the basic building blocks of botanical names. So in families, in a family, you have a single group of genera that closely or uniformly resembles each other in a general appearance and technical characteristics. So let me break that down a little bit more. So we're looking at uh, a family and I'll say the Rose family. In the Rose family, it's, it's pretty huge. You've got hundreds of different types of plants in it. You'll have, we'll say example, a rose. And also another plant in the family would be, say, a pear tree. Now, you kind of look at those two and you think, how the heck are they in the same family? But if you look at the fruit in those two plants, they're pretty close. I think some of what those people that are doing when they're coming up with the names they see how uh, plants reproduce. Um, sometimes it's for, for the areas they are at, but a lot of times they have a lot of the same characteristics. So the rose family is rosaceae, and you can have different types of plants in it. If you look at a rose and you look at the fruit, they get something called a rose hip. A rose hip looks a lot like, say, an ornamental pear. If you, you know, look at both the rose hip and the ornamental pear, their fruits close to the same thing. Now, a lot of the tree families or any plant families, a lot of the fruits will have those same characteristics. That's partly why they're in that family. Now, genus, a group of tree species that have fundamental traits in common but that differ in other lesser characteristics. For an example, let's talk about the rose family still. In the rose family, you have these trees, and then I'll talk about three trees specifically. We've got pyrus, prunus, and mollus. Now in these genus, they are all in the same family, but each tree looks different, but they have a lot of the same characteristics. Um, even though they look different, they have a lot of characteristics that are in that same family. So you have pyrus, which is pear, prunus, it could be peach, also mollus is crab apple. Now if you go to each individual tree, definitely they do look different, but sometimes in the way they bloom, they'll a lot of times look the same the, sometimes they have the same type of fruit so like those type of characteristics put it still in that same family but tree wise genus they're different in species it's a natural group of trees in the same genus made up of similar individuals so for an example of that you have um, an ornamental pear, it's a pyrus calariana, and then there is a evergreen pear, that's a pyrus kawakami. Now both of those are also, they're in the rosaceae family, and their genus is pyrus, but now the species makes them different. If you look at them in the, you know, out, out and you'll see an ornamental pear, well it structures more upright um, canopy is somewhat broad. The bark is like more smooth. Now, if you go and look at an evergreen pear, that's broad. The canopy is really broad. Um, it's it's got really rough, dark bark. So it's a really completely different looking tree. But if you look at the flowers and the fruit that they have, there's a lot of similarities. 
but they are different trees. They're in the same genus and in the same family. Now I'm going to talk about variety. So we started with the rose family. Now we're still in the rose family, but I'm going to talk about a different genus. It's a sorbus. It's, um, and in that sorbus genus, you have a species named domestica. And in that species domestica, there's a variety named pomphyria. Now that there's there could be subtle differences and then with the pomphyria it's a little bit different the fruit is probably a little bit more round or it grows just a little bit different than the regular domestica that's what's part of that species so in in that um, the way we would look at it it would be um, rosaceae family uh, sorbus domestica and then you'd see variety and that variety would be pomphyria. So there's that subtle difference that changes it from the regular domestica. It really looks a lot like the same tree, but they have those subtle differences that is specific to that variety. Next, we'll talk about cultivar. Now, cultivar is um, more of a man-made type of thing. A cultivar is a variety selected for one or more outstanding characteristics that is being cultivated and usually reproduced by asexual means to preserve genetic makeup. For an example, I'll stay talking about the rose family, the rosaceae, and in that family you have the pear trees. The pear trees genus is Pyrus and there's species Clariana and in that species, they've chosen um, certain parts of a tree and they've created a uh, cultivar. There's a cultivar called an aristocrat. Now what they've done is from that Clariana species, they've got traits that they like, kept it, and produced it. And that's how they get the aristocrat. There are also other cultivars of the Clariana. In each of those other cultivars, they pick parts of the tree that they like, and it alters them. There's also a Bradford, a Chanticleer, and a Red Spire. Now, some of those species will get larger or smaller. They might have different fall color. When they do those types of things, that's kind of what they'll create in a cultivar. So the, the thing that a cultivar can do, it's, it's reproduced by man but they get all those different aspects or the things they like more and that's how they'll create that specific cultivar. So hybrid is a tree that results from mating genetically unlike individuals can occur in nature or artificially. So an example of a hybrid, and it's one that I know about, it's a, a catalpa tree. It's a genus of catalpa, and I believe that family name is Bignoniaceae. Anyhow, they had a catalpa, and in the same family, they had another tree called a chiliopsis. So what I understand is they put those two trees together and created a chitalpa. Completely different. It wasn't that type of tree before. But with those two genus, they created a hybrid called a Chitalpa. So in a hybrid, the two genuses have to be in the same family. It can occur out in nature, um, but it occurs a lot in labs. Botanical nomenclature. It's just a scientific way of naming uh, plant. So how it's written, we'll start off with the family name, Rosaceae. When you see Rosaceae, it should be written with a capital and a telesize. Next we'll go to the genus, and I'll say Sorbus. Sorbus is a genus, and it should be a capital and a telesize. 
Now from the genus, you have species. And the species name should be a lowercase and italicized. And further from that, we'll have a variety. When you see a variety, it's usually going to be abbreviated VAR. And the variety name will be a capital, but in regular writing. Then the next one will be a cultivar. In a cultivar, you'll still um, have a family, Rosaceae, and the Rosaceae is going to be um, capitalized and italicized. Then the genus will be Pyrus, and Pyrus is going to be capitalized and italicized. Um, next will be species, and the species, Clariana, it's going to be lowercase and italicized. Now when you get to the cultivar part, that's going to be in quotations, capitalized, but in regular writing. Next we have hybrid. And the way a hybrid is written, you'll see an X before the genus. So, for example, a family name of Bignoniaceae, that'll be the same. You'll see a capital and it's going to be italicized, the family name, Bignoniaceae. Next, we'll go to genus. This is a hybrid. In this genus, you'll see an X. And the hybrid I'm talking about is a Chitalpa. Now, the Chitalpa will be capitalized and italicized. And then the species name will be lowercase and italicize Toscateniensis. That's how you would write a hybrid um, tree scientifically. Well, that was a video on um, plant nomenclature, uh, families and genus and species. It's really important to know the scientific names of plants or trees that you're going to work on. A scientific name is worldwide. A lot of times common names, they vary in regions and areas. So you could have a tree with a common name called something different somewhere else. Having a scientific name will be concrete. It's really helpful if you had to do plans, if you worked on designs, landscape designs, and you'll see all these botanical names on that. For sure, you know that name will be the right tree. Hope you guys liked that video. Comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you like what we do. And by all means, share our videos with your friends. All right, take care. We'll see you next time.